Hi, welcome to the Pulse Shift News again guys. I thought I'd make the topic of this video uh, all solar related, or I'll try and keep it all solar related in here. As we, as we can see, uh, we look at the geomagnetic field, it's quiet, and there's normal solar x-rays. And that's the trend with regards to sunspots as well. If we just take a quick look, there is not really anything on the disk uh, to talk about, and that's the same for the X-rays, protons, and KP index, all very low, very calm indeed. Um, what I wanted to talk about is the current solar cycle that we're in, uh, solar cycle 24. Uh, if we compare it with 23, 22, we can see that they have been dropping off exponentially over the last, you know, uh, 33 years, and we're at uh, 2018 now. And although this space environment overview doesn't go back that time, it does show something important I wanted to bring across to you guys. If we look at solar cycle 24, which is at the end of this chart here, and just compare that with, you know, the general pattern of sunspots before that with solar cycle 23 and 22, and then just come down to the cosmic rays, we'll see that at the end of these solar cycles, as time has been going on, something's been increasing, and that is the cosmic rays that are inbound. Now, at the end of solar cycle 22, we can see that there was a considerable amount more of uh, cosmic rays uh, during the uh, quiet part of that, um, you know, the end of the solar cycle, so to speak. So, what do you think uh, we can expect when we look at this picture again in terms of cosmic rays if there was a considerable amount here and just slightly less here then it tells us that when the numbers are low obviously we get more cosmic rays inbound and that's to do with the solar, uh, the heliosphere that protects our solar system all the planets within our solar system generally enjoy a healthy heliosphere and this can expand past our uh, solar system when we're having you know great activity on the sun let's have a look at um, what we're talking about here with regards to sunspots so I know this is a bad example I've pointed out why is because you know during this period of time it was solar maximum and this period of time it was taken during solar minimum but the idea is just to give you an idea when we have lots of sunspot activity on the sun we generally uh, we don't see it but we do have a healthily inflated heliosphere and that protects us from all the cosmic radiation. Now as you guys know we're going through a pole shift and the magnetosphere has dropped by around 20% and that in itself will allow more cosmic rays in, into the uh, inner atmosphere or the lower atmosphere of our planet and you know yourselves because you've heard it now not just on this channel but on other channels that when we have this uh, anomaly then we have more uh, precipitation in our atmosphere and this in turn guys um, affects our jet streams now over the northern hemisphere I'll show you on the chart in a minute that we should have two jet streams the polar jet stream and subtropical jet stream and the same over the southern hemisphere of the earth if I just rotate uh, this globe you'll see that there isn't a, really a distinguishable pattern between the two they are very much intertwined and that's because uh, the water um, in the jet streams makes them sluggish and you know makes them uh, fragment and then on top of that just having <coughs> extra cosmic radiation in causing more water to form in those jet streams and be carried along we also have a problem related to the earth going through a magnetic reversal and a weakened magnetosphere because these don't align these jet streams horizontally to the magnetic poles just via coincidence and we don't just have arctic regions over the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere 
for the same reason. It's not by coincidence. This is, you know, our planetary mechanics and this is the way it's set up to work. But we've got right now interaction between subtropical jet streams, which should be around 60 degrees north, and, and, and the polar jet stream, which is around 30 degrees north. And, you know, dead 90 degrees is the Arctic Circle. And, you know, I don't think it's synchronicity or coincidence that, again, we have these numbers, 3, 6, and 9, um, if we just, you know, reduce the fact that we've got, you know, the zeros after them, 90 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees. I think, you know, that what Nikola Tesla was talking about, the 3, 6, 9, we could understand a lot about our universe if we understood the importance and significance of these numbers. I really believe that that's true. I think our ancestors knew a lot more about these uh, numbers than what we do. They also knew uh, more about the cycles that take place and, you know, about, uh, what, you know, possibly even larger cycles, uh, such as what the Mayans might have been predicting with their uh, date of 2012. That's six, that's six years away. And I'm just wondering whether the Gregorian calendar that we are in and part of now has, you know, mistakenly, uh, incorrectly dated our years that we're in. And if that is in the case, if that is the case, then, you know, the Mayans might have predicted something about our time that we have, uh, overlooked. There's something else about the Mayan calendar. Uh, first of all, the dates. Uh, 13 back ton was the representation, if I'm correct, uh, in, in stating the year 2012. But one back ton is a total number of 144,000 days. And this is a number that turns up in the King James Bible for some reason. And, you know, if we look back on history, uh, and some of the megaliths that have been left standing for thousands of years to this day, what we're going to find is that they are calendars themselves. For instance, Stonehenge, um, you know, perfectly aligns with the summer solstice and the winter solstice. This is a monument which is supposedly over 6,000 years old, just like the Egyptian pyramids. Again, we have the Sphinx uh, watching the sun rise in the west and to its back it's setting in the east. You know, these are things that they were obviously obsessed about and it was part of their, it was really important in their culture to know about these things. In fact, you know, back in those days, if you didn't have some form of calendar, you couldn't get your crop rotations in at the right time and that could cause, you know, unsuccessful civilizations due to lack of food and therefore they would collapse at those periods of time. Something we have to, I think, uh, bear in mind during this global uh, slowdown and, you know, change of climate. Not just for the fact of the grand solar minimum, but also we have to add in something very important and possibly earth changing, the magnetic pole reversal which is taking place, which is a real rare event and something we don't quite know what to expect as a result of that because there was no recorded uh, documentation or knowledge even to our uh, today's uh, searching we find nothing related to a pole shift or if there is something out there we haven't we haven't understood it correctly something that the Egyptians also had was a sun god and I think it was Ra they called it the sun god and you know if you're a scientist you know how important that sun is to our planet without it there'd be no life at all on this planet so you could understand why they would worship something as a sun god I mean for me you know and a, a little bit better or, or maybe they did have the knowledge of the same mathematics as what I've got today but, you know, I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about is the universal conscious and the universal equation that I'm aware of. And I've introduced a few of you guys to it um, over these years. You know, it gives us an understanding that this universe has been operating on a mathematical system. In fact, you know, it, it wouldn't be uh, denied that a universal language of intelligence would have 
a base of mathematics um, as part of that. Well, we know that this universe definitely creates on a mathematical system. And for that reason, you know, there is a conscious out there, uh, regardless of what you choose to call your God, there is a conscious out there and it is intelligently designing um, our universe as a result. So guys, that should be some great comfort for you out there. I mean, it is one thing to have just a complete belief in a superior being or a God or whoever you choose to be your God, but it is a completely another thing to have someone present to you the evidence of this universe creating in an intelligent way. That should be, like I say, a little comforting to some of you guys. So we're looking at where the, the polar jet stream and the subtropical jet stream should be on our planet and as you can see even though this wasn't taken today the photo of the jet streams they are as you saw earlier in this video um, not in the positions they should be we should have the subtropical jet streams at 30 degrees north around this region here and then the polar jet streams should be around this region here and somewhere in between we have this great big slug um, of a jet stream and you can see it's heavily laden with you know precipitation and you know we're getting all sorts of um, deliveries of weather systems as a result of the jet streams breaking down you know if you're at 52 degrees north or around about that uh, or in the UK at least today around about 7.30 go out into your garden and just have a look at what's at the right hand side of the sun because uh, I don't know whether you've noticed the last two evenings because people just barely don't notice anything anymore but there's some very visible signs of change in the sky what I'm talking about are sun dogs this is an indication that there is ice crystals in the atmosphere and as the sun goes through them it prismates the uh, sun and you get these balls now over in the Arctic Circle you'll have three you'll have one to the left of the Sun one to the right of the Sun and one directly above the Sun at least uh, for me I've seen one to the right of the Sun uh, for the last two nights in the UK at around about 7.30 on the evening and uh, if you've got clear skies and you're at 52 or around 50 degrees north on the planet you'll see the same things as what I've been seeing Again guys, these things aren't common and they've only been in our atmosphere and visible for the last six or seven years. And if you remember, I said to you guys, things really started to change um, with regards to uh, climate on this planet around 2007. And there is no equilibrium reached as of yet, which means things are still unsettled on our planet and they are going to continue to get worse and worse. The magnetic poles are still migrating on this planet and we are entering a grand solar minimum at the same time. This is <clears throat> in its all entirety a double whammy for us people on this earth. Now I briefly was talking about you know a creator and a god and there's something else I just wanted to mention just before I round this video up for you guys. I mean, if you want, you can switch this video off if you don't want to hear this. Or, you know, if you want to just stick around and hear what I've got to say, you know, it might be worth it. We are going through not only massive changes with regards to the nature on this planet. We're also going through changes as individuals. Our consciousness are changing. Our behaviour is changing. And I just want to point out something. You know, it is well within our power to change our attitudes but it is probably not so easy to change the climate on this planet at least you know in the history of the Bible it was recorded that when certain attitudes came about certain um, geological events took place I'm talking about the flood I'm talking about uh, what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and I'm talking about what has been promised in Revelations something you might want to think about because 
I bet you have noticed, as well as I have, the difference in the behaviour of people. People are becoming more selfish, more wicked, and more corrupt. And, you know, they are stepping out of their communities and, you know, going out for themselves and not sharing, not helping others. And, you know, their general attitude is plummeting. And we're going to see more and more of this because even good people will eventually get fed up of, you know, trying to set a better example for others to follow when they see there is no change in their attitudes regardless even those people will become like the others and we are going to plunge ourselves through our behavior into probably tribulation times which has been promised because every time our attitudes have gone like this for some reason there has been geological events so you know if i just go back a little bit i said you know what we can't change nature just want to ask you something. Do you think we're not part of it? Has humankind segregated itself from all the diversities on this planet to the point where it has put itself on a plateau above everything else and considers itself no longer part of nature? Because if that is the case, then, you know, that is something entirely, completely bizarre. You know, how could an intelligent species do that to itself? But if we are in the understanding that we are part of nature, and if nature, even a small amount of it ourselves, begin to change, we can have effects on the rest of it. And, you know, I think the Bible states that. It is almost like a regulative force that regulates our behaviour. You know, and when we get to a certain behaviour, you know, we pull along with it, perhaps, uh, nature. Because all of a sudden, you know, the behaviour over the last 20, 30 years of people have been slowly degrading and corroding. And then along with it, guys, just look at, what has been taking place with regards to the climate on this planet and other things within our solar system has it been our own doing and you know are we approaching that time what has been promised in the bible with regards to you know those tribulations mentioned in revelations in the bible because if that is the case then you know woe betide us because we have a lot more to come because for sure I can't see the behaviour of people changing. I can only see, just like some of the charts we look at, <coughs> decreasing exponentially. Um, I'm going to end the video here, guys. I want to mention just briefly um, the fact that, you know, we are losing support on this channel. Uh, probably just like, you know, some of the charts we're looking at, you know, the, the exponential uh, decrease in support. And... I can't understand why that is, you know, because we've never done, or I have never done, so much for this channel and the website and the observatory as what I have done more recently. Yet yeah, I've got, you know, less support for doing that. I'm just wondering um, what's happening to even our little community here. I'm going to leave the link down there if you want to support it. Guys, um, like I say, this is probably the last video now until at least um, in June. And, you know, if you are about tonight in the UK or at 52 degrees and you have got clear skies, just have a look at what's at the right hand side of the sun. And maybe that will be enough to convince even some of you or some of your family members that haven't got a clue what's happening right now to our planet. I'll say what I usually do. Bye for now.